let's watch that language. So my friend, well, there's a situation that's come up that, that we gotta we gotta talk about, man. It's important. And what that situation is is sin. Sin is creeping around all over the place. And sin is looking to devour you like a lion. My friend, sin is looking to devour you like a lion. And my friend, if you give in to sin, it's crouching at your door. But the problem is, many of us have given up, given it up to sin. We said, you know, man, what little sin ain't gonna hurt me? It ain't gonna hurt for me to get drunk tonight. It's not gonna hurt for me to drink the Bible and not get a little drunk. All right, brother, come bless you, man. Thank you for coming. All right, hey, hey, all right, little fellas, thanks for coming. So, brother, all right. Thank you. Very good. So, man, anyway, I think I think tonight what I'm going to do, see, man, thanks for helping out, bro. Tonight I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink a little liquor. And then uh, I think what I'm going to do after I drink some liquor is I'm going to go maybe uh, murder somebody. Wait, what? Hold on for a second. Nothing wrong with it. In our minds, we're drinking a little liquor. There ain't nothing wrong with drinking a little liquor, but the problem is we're going to murder somebody. Wait, hold on, hold on, murder somebody. No, well, that's what I like to do. It's a new society. It's a new society. It's okay to murder people, isn't it? I mean, come on, man. Let everybody do what they want. Do what they want. It shall be the whole law. So, you know, it may not seem like a big thing for you to lie a little bit, but you get upset with me when I want to murder somebody. And so what the Bible says that if you violate one part of the law, you violated the whole part of the law. So you may think, hey, man, I'm going to get me a little 40. I'm going to drink me a little 40 real quick. You get a little drunk, but then when you go and you say, hey, I'm going to murder somebody, you get upset. And that's the way you've got it. See, we don't see, we don't see our sin as a big thing. We don't see our sin as a big thing, but to God, it's a violation of his law. To God, it's a violation of his standard, man. See, we don't see, we might not see maybe looking at that girl walking down the street going, ooh, look at that girl. She's fine. You start having them thoughts about sex in your mind about her. But guess what? What if you what if I what if I broke into your house and I raped your little daughter tonight? How'd you feel about that? You'd be furious. You'd be furious and rightfully so. You know why you'd be furious? Because it's a it's a gross violation. It's a gr it's a gross violation, my friend. And so so we have a we have a we have a subjective righteousness. Some people say, you know, man, look, if we would ever talk to Jeffrey Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer thought it was okay to murder people and eat them. And we all know that's wrong. But, you know, God says the same thing with liars, man. It's a gross violation. God's not a liar. And when we lie, we say we can't trust him. And when we steal, we say God can't provide for me, so I'm going to go ahead and steal. So, man, you know, if we're going to go ahead and do the sins, why not just do them all? Because your conscience warns you over and over not to do these things, man. Not to lie, not to sin, not to commit adultery, not to use God's name in vain. He warns us over and over and over again not to do these things. And my friend, that's what we do. We violate our conscience. We have violated our conscience more times than we can. We've done cruel things or mean things, things that we are embarrassed about that we think nobody else knows. But guess what? Nothing is hidden from God. Nothing, absolutely nothing you have ever done in your entire life is hidden from God Almighty. And my friend, we have to give an account of Him one day, to Him one day, of the things that we've done in the flesh. And see, the Bible makes it real clear. He doesn't want any ambiguity about where you're going. He wants you to know that all liars will have their place in the lake of fire, all idolaters. He says, don't be deceived. Drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. Nor were homosexuals, nor were thieves. All these people were guilty before God. See, God's law shows the perfection of God, how pure God is and how holy He is, and that nobody will stand in, the, in His sight on the day of judgment in their own righteousness. In their own righteousness, nobody will stand before God. Nobody, nobody will stand before God in righteousness. So think about that for a second, man. When you die and you stand before God and God says he rules you guilty, you're going to think back to this day and you're going to say, hey, man, maybe I should have listened to that guy on the street corner. Maybe I should have listened to what he was saying. Maybe I should have repented and followed Christ while I had an opportunity. Maybe I should have followed Jesus while I had an opportunity. That I shouldn't squander my life away on things that were worthless. Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I shouldn't have done all that sin. And I should have cried out to him on August October 30th, 19. 
2018, sorry. The Lions ah, for real? Yeah, guys, 19, so and, 19 and 21. Hey, hey, praise the Lord, man. Thank you. Be safe. So, my friend, now is the time. Now is the time to repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus. Now is the time to repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus before it's too late, before your time runs out. You know, I was out here one night, man, and I was, I was hanging out, and this young lady walked past me down here, and she walked down the street, and this guy murdered her in the stairwell down here, shot her dead, dead as a doornail. She died. She didn't know she was going to die that night. You may not know it either. But, man, please, please, please make sure that you're right with God. Man, please make sure that you're not under God's wrath. My friend, this is, a, this is a dangerous world we live in. None of us are guaranteed another moment. None of us are guaranteed another day or week or month or year. And so we have to we have to make sure that we're right with the living God, man, because we may have tons of education. We may have tons of money. We may have tons of girls. But none of that stuff makes any difference on the day of judgment. It doesn't benefit us at all on judgment day when we stand before a God that's holy and pure and demands holiness from us. Now, how does a person get holy? How does a person get holy? The only way a person gets holy is to repent and put their faith and trust in Jesus. Jesus gives us, imparts to us, his holiness. He gives us his purity. So we can walk around at five points with all that's going on down here. And we're holy. We're holy before our God. And God demonstrated. He didn't just tell us that he loves us. He demonstrated his love for us by dying on the cross. You've had a lot of people probably walk up and go, man, I love you. I love you. And then a month later, a week later, they leave. But Jesus is different. Jesus is greater because when he says he loves you and he adopts you into the family, he doesn't kick you out. He seals you. He brings you in. He makes you his son, his child, his friend. He said, he said, he said, he said that Moses was a friend of God. But my friend, that's the type of relationship he wants. But sin by it keeps us separated from God. Sin separates us from God. That's because God is pure. God doesn't lie. God is not a liar. God is not a thief. God is not an adulterer. God, God is pure in all his motives. And so when he invites us in, he invites us in to become part of his family. But we have to enter into faith. And faith is a gift of God. It's not by works. It's not by doing a bunch of religious things. We may, we may go down the street and go to McDonald's. We may go to McDonald's. But going to McDonald's doesn't make me or John Sims or Alex a hamburger. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. But makes you, what makes you sit right with God is the gift that he gives us, the free gift of salvation that God gives us through his son Jesus alone. Only through his son Jesus alone does he give us salvation. Think about that, man. When I walk out and I ask this to everybody and say, hey, listen, man, if God is making you holy, how come you're not telling people how to be holy? Okay, I can tell you how to be holy. How do you be holy? Yeah, I'm a, is, is it by walking up the street or walking down the street? Or is it by yelling on the street corner? No. No. It's not It's not by that. No, you can't follow. That's a, 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 a great question. He said, follow, follow about the attitudes, and nobody can follow the Beatitudes. He said, he, Jesus said to the Beatitudes, I was serving the mouth, he said, he you said, shall heard it said of all that you shall head. not commit adultery. Bless it all. And he says, wow. if you look at a woman who wants to have to hurt, he's committing adultery with a woman already in the heart. I'm not trying to fight against you, but I want you to. You mean look at the love?